This will be video 1.3, and here we'll talk about something called scientific notation. Now, you may have seen scientific notation before, and it will be a method for writing very big numbers or very small numbers in a manageable way. What you've got here is you actually have uh, pictures of a virus or viruses, which are extremely tiny. So if you want to take the mass of a virus, you'll have a number that has a lot of zeros in front of it. So instead of writing out 18 zeros in front of the number, we'll actually write it in a much shorter way using scientific notation. So let's get the rules for scientific notation. And what we do is we essentially count how many numbers or decimal places we have uh, to, the, uh, to the last number, well, just to the first number. And then we rewrite the significant digits, just the significant digits, followed by times 10 to the something. This would be your power. And in this power, essentially, we'll put however many decimal places that we counted. So a quick example, if you have a big number, notice this number, 93 million, what we would do is we would count how many decimal places from the back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, took seven decimal places, and then we put that in the power, times 10 to the seven. We just take down the significant digits. In this case, all these zeros are not significant, so we don't take them down. We only take down the nine and the three, and we put the decimal place right there. If it's a tiny number, a similar thing happens. If it's a small number, you take the decimal place and count how many times it takes to get to the uh, first number, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it took six times here. Now, because it's a small number, we'll have to make the exponent negative, 10 to the negative sixth. Again, we take down just these three numbers because they're significant to get 1.53. So why don't we try a few of these examples? So how about we try this one? Write these in scientific notation. For a big number, we'll begin at the back and count how many decimal places it takes to get to the uh, first number, which in this case is six. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It took us eight decimal places. We take down just the significant digits, which is just the 6.53. Now we do times 10 to the eight. Simple as that. If uh, we have a tiny number again, we'll begin with this decimal place and take it all the way out here after the first number. Let's count how many times that does that takes. One, two, three, four, five. It took five times. We rewrite just the numbers, so 4.5, not the non-zero numbers, and times 10 to the, now since it's a tiny number, we'll have to remember the negative, so it'd be negative five. And if you were to actually put this in your calculator, 10 to the negative whatever number will give you a small number with a bunch of zeros in front. You can actually try it, but this is how we represent. If uh, you want to know exactly what this means, any number to a negative power means it's going to be 1 over that number to that power. So 10 to the negative 5 is the same thing as 1 over 10 to the 5th, if you're curious. You don't have to understand this relation, but it helps use it. Why don't we go um, back the other way? So going from scientific notation to regular notation, what we'll do essentially, we'll have to extend this decimal place out five times to the right. So if we have 3.4, let's go five times to the right, one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna be the end of the number. And now we're going to fill these spots in with zeros. Let's go ahead and rewrite it um, because this decimal place has now disappeared. We have ourselves 34000 or 34,000. And that's how you would uh, write this number. Well, I'm sorry, five, five times, right? I am I forgetting as you can. Here we go. That's a little better. 340,000. If we have a tiny number, let's do the same thing, except we'll go left because a tiny uh, or a negative exponent gives us a tiny number. So if I have 8.5, Four, three, three. Let me take it to the left seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put the decimal place there and fill them in with zeros. So you'll find that you have six zeros. It'll be one less than whatever's up here. So rewrite this to make it cleaner, and we got ourselves point 
six zeros and eight four three three. Squeeze that in. Oftentimes, I'll put another zero in front just uh, for you to be able to see a little easier that this is a decimal place. So this is how you go back and forth with scientific notation. And uh, the next example, you can try it on your own. So pause the video and try a few of these. Just like we did in the previous video, we're going to do some operations, some math with scientific notation. Whenever you're multiplying numbers in scientific notation, you would add their exponents. And this is really a rule that comes from mathematics. So if you were to multiply 3.0 times 10 to the fifth by 2.0 times 10 to the second, what you'd have to do, you'd actually multiply the numbers to get 6.0. So 3.0 times 2.0 gives you 6.0. You'd multiply those two, but your exponents get added up to give you 7. And that's why you have the 7 here. So multiply the numbers, add the exponents. Dividing, similar thing, you would divide the actual numbers. In this case, 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. And then you would subtract the exponents. 5 minus 2 gives you 3. And that's why we have 10 to the third. So not too difficult. Just remember adding if you're multiplying, subtracting if you're dividing. The rule for um, addition and subtraction is a little strange and actually quite a bit different. The rule here says that when adding or subtracting, you would ignore the small number unless the exponents are the same or close. So notice what we've done. Here we have 3.0 times 10 to the sixth plus 2.0 times 10 to the second. And notice we just ignored this small number. The answer is simply the first number. Similarly, when we have 3.0 times 10 to the sixth minus 2.0 times 10 to the second, we ignore this smaller number. Now, it's smaller because of the times 10 to the second. Uh, this is actually quite a bit smaller than times 10 to the sixth. So the bigger number is the one that will have the bigger exponent. It's all going to be about the exponent. Now, the reason this rule works is because of significant figures. This number, 2.0 times 10 to the second, is actually 200. And this number, 3.0 times 10 to the sixth, is actually 3 million. So whenever you're uh, doing 3 million minus 200, or 3 million plus 200, it doesn't really make a difference. You still have 3 million. Now you may say, well, that 200 got lost somewhere. Why are we ignoring it? Uh, because of significant figures. Because we're only considering two significant figures, so we would have to cut it off here anyway and round the rest. Cut it off here and round the rest. Think of it, if someone, uh, if you had 3 million buckaroos and uh, somebody were to offer you $200, uh, you probably would not be very excited about it. Similarly, if somebody took 200 bucks from you, you probably wouldn't care as much if you have three million dollars. And that's, that's kind of the idea. Now, if here it says if they are the same or close, then you have to consider it. And we'll maybe do an example of this. Uh, and the way to do it, if they're the same or close, I would write the numbers out in regular notation, and then add them, and then write them back in scientific notation. That would be probably the way to do it. And hopefully we'll get an example where we can try one and show you. Let's try this one here. It says, determine the answer to the following without using a calculator. There is a way to plug these scientific notation numbers into the calculator, but here we want you to do it without that. So we have 3.4 10 times 10 to the fifth plus 6.5 times 10 to the eighth. And here, addition or subtraction is happening. So the rule said ignore the small number. Let's think which of these two numbers is smaller. Well, it'll be the one with a smaller exponent. So this number would get ignored. Now, I know that it looks like, uh, well, that's, that's correct, yeah, 10 to the fifth. So that number will get ignored. So the answer is simply the bigger number, 6.5 times 10 to the eighth. When we're dividing, in this case, the rule said go ahead and divide the actual numbers and then subtract the exponents. So we'll divide 8 by 2, which gives us 4, 4.0 to keep significant figures. And then we'll subtract the exponent 6 minus 4, gives us times 10 to the second. Uh, I guess I can quickly, we have a minute or so, let me quickly show you what would happen if you were subtracting numbers that were the same or close. Maybe if we have uh, 
how about we have 1.5 times 10 to the fourth plus um, how about 2.2 times 10 to the third. In this case, these numbers are close enough and we cannot ignore the smaller number. What you would do is you would write these out. So this one can get written out as 15,000 and this one can get written out as 2,200. So what you can essentially do is you can then add these two which gives us, if you add them, you can actually put them right below each other, that's easier. 2200 gives us a 0, a 0, a 2, a 7, and a 1. And then you can rewrite this number using scientific notation. And you got 1.72 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, to the 4. Now, since we're dealing with significant figures, since you, I'm sorry, since you began with 2 here and 2 here, you actually get rid of this 2, and the final answer would be 1.7 times 10 to the 4. So that's how you would do um, a problem where you cannot ignore the smaller number. Notice the answer isn't just 1.5 times 10 to the 4th. It got changed by this number to give you 1.7 times 10 to the 4th. If this uh, sounded a little bit confusing, don't worry. We'll actually practice some more of it in class. And this concludes for us lesson 1.5.